What's going on my fellow rock and rollers? Now the Who's history has been full of tragedy, including the death of both drummer Keith Moon and bassist John Entwistle, as well as the death of 11 fans in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1979. And on top of that, guitarist Pete Townsend would suffer abuse when he was a child. But one of the most often forgotten about tragedies that happened to the band was the death of Keith Moon's driver and bodyguard. What happened to him? You'll find out in today's video. So it was January of 1970 and drummer Keith Moon, his wife, their bodyguard and driver, as well as several of their friends would attend the grand opening of the Red Lion Pub in Hatfield, Hertfordshire. Now the pub was owned by one of Moon's neighbors, but unfortunately for Moon that night, a group of skinheads also attended the opening. Now they weren't fans of Moon and they were put off by his fancy clothes, his nice car and his penchant for brandy compared to the working class drink of choice, which was beer. Now as the bar was about to close its doors for the night, Moon and his entourage headed back to his Bentley in the parking lot, but they were unable to leave. A mob of skinheads soon started violently shaking the car and throwing coins at the passengers, and Moon's bodyguard Neil Bolin would exit the car and went to confront the crowd who had congregated at the hood of the vehicle. Now what happened next wasn't exactly clear, but the official story goes that Moon, figuring that time wasn't on his side, chose to get behind the wheel and drive to safety. Now it's important to note that even when sober, Moon never drove himself because he didn't have a driver's license or insurance. Now sadly, nobody from Moon's party realized that bodyguard Neil Boland was underneath the car and he would be crushed and dragged down the road. Now Boland would make it to the hospital alive, but he would be pronounced dead shortly after arrival. Now there was conflicting reports as to whether or not Moon was the one driving the vehicle as it sped away. Now Boland's daughter believes it was Moon's wife, Kim, who got behind the wheel, but Moon's biographer, Tony Fletcher, would later interview Jean Batty, who was in the car that night, and she confirmed that Keith was the one behind the wheel. Now as expected, Moon would be charged with Boland's death in addition to drunk driving and driving without a license and insurance. Now lucky for the drummer, the death would be declared an accident and the charges would be dismissed. Under the circumstances, the judge told Moon, you had no choice but to act the way you did and no moral culpability is attached to you. Now it would be a traumatic event that would haunt Moon until the day he died in September of 1978. So that concludes today's story guys, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the judge's sentence down below in the comments section. And as always, if you have suggestions for future stories, let me know as well. And be sure to support my channel by watching another video or go check us out on Patreon starting as low as $2 a month. Take care.